Hey guys, SKC Savvy here coming at you with an OP2 Doflamingo replay. This is the same Doflamingo list that was in the deck profile. If you didn't see the deck profile, I suggest you go check that out. Even though, disclaimer, I say um probably a good hundred, maybe two hundred times. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna get better at not saying um so much and just trying to be more natural in front of the camera. Alright, let's get into the replay. So we are gonna end up winning the dice roll and going first. Um, we're going to start out with a Perona, and then we are going to stack the deck. We see our 6k Gekko Moria, and we see our Luffy's for our Ivankov. So we're looking we're looking good this game. Especially since we're playing against Ivankov, you know, we're, we're fine with going low hand size because our opponent will be doing the same. So he also plays a Perona, looks at the top 5, puts him back on top so we know it was something good that he saw up there. Now we're debating on what to do. Not sure why. We're just going to attach the leader. Swing. This is just obvious. I just wanted to go over my options just because. Swing 7. And we play this 6k. Now, this 6k off the top is a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. Our opponent, because he's playing blue, on his next turn, he doesn't have a lot of good 3-cost options to play. Committing Dawn into this is not the most optimal. And also, if he does decide to put a bunch of dawn on his leader and swing at it well we have a vonkov we're just going to combo out to protect it but also he's just going to be passing his turn to do that so we see him combo out of this swing i was a little caught off guard at first but then i realized i'm playing against a vonkov that's a duh of course he would do that so now our opponent's going to sit here and he's going to think for a little bit this video sped up but as you can see he was thinking for a good amount of time on what to do he ultimately plays the four drop and then swings with his leader guys this is just a heads up. When you're swinging at leader, please swing first, then play your cards. There are scenarios where you want to play things, then swing first. But most of the time, especially in your blue matchup, you don't want to play something and then swing because a lot of our trigger effects will bounce your cards. Here he goes. Swings in the leader. We're going to combo out. We don't want to take early damage. We know what we're playing against. We don't want to get hit with Luffy for double strike. So we combo. We also want a low hand size for our Ivankov. Our opponent now decides to pass. We're debating on what to do. We decide to play Perona because we do want to hit that leader effect. We know we're not hitting that leader effect based on what's on the top. So now we're just going to rearrange again. We decide to put the one Luffy at the very bottom and then stack a Luffy in to where when we play our Ivankov on our seven drop turn, it is going to be deadly. We then swing 7, use our leader effect, play the Jinbei off the top. Our opponent will take that, and then we swing 7 with the 6k Gekko Moria at his leader. He blocks, and then he decides not to combo to protect his blocker. Now, this is telling me a few things. Either that was a misplay, or he just doesn't have combo in his hand like that, uh, which is a win-win for either scenario. So he lets that die. Now it's his turn. He, again, is playing cards before swinging. There's no reason to really do this. He should have just swung with his leader first. But now he ends up his leader at mine. Debating on how much I should combo out of this. I decide to dump everything on this because he will not be swinging again. If he would have attached three on this Perona and swung at my Jinbei, it would have bottom decked his blocker. So that's why we weren't really afraid of that. So now we're swinging first. Then we're going to play our Bonkov. We swing six. He decides to dump a lot onto that. I'm not 100% sure why, because now we're coming at him again. Maybe he's just trying to get out of this hole that he's in. Swing five. He takes it. We swing five again. He blocks with the one drop. And then we go Avankov into Luffy. This is just an insane combo. Right here, I was debating if I should use the effect to bounce my own Perona, just so I can use my leader more. But looking at my hand, I don't really want to pitch these cards off Luffy the next turn, so... Let's just keep the hand size up and try to use our Luffy on the follow-up. So here he goes. He plays his own Luffy. Now, I thought this was kind of a bad play, but then he used the Luffy effect, and I saw that his hand just was not the best. So he pitches two. He bounces. I think he just knew he was going to lose. He could have played this turn completely different. I think he kind of misplayed this whole turn out. But, you know, that could have been a good play. But now it's my turn. He has one card in hand. We saw him pitch a Love Love Beam, so I'm assuming that's another Love Love Beam in his hand. And when we use the Luffy, we're going to bounce 1k to his hand. So 
Now we're just doing some quick maths. We end up attaching four to the Luffy because he won't be able to combo out of this unless he draws a 2k off the top, I believe. Even if he did draw a 2k, I'm not sure how I did the math there. But he ends up taking it anyway. So he takes it, then we swing seven, just raw seven, and he takes it. I'm like, okay, well, we can't let him keep those combos in his hand. We're just going to attach everything and swing. And I'm debating what's the better target to use. I end up putting it on leader and swinging because if... He does combo out, which I'm assuming he will. We can just um, keep the Jinbei up and then just have more swings on the next turn. And then we also have the Luffy to bounce a blocker. So our opponent then starts messaging me in chat saying GG's um, because he recognized that he was losing that game. So now we go on to game two here. Uh, we did play a match. I was just talking to my opponent. He was saying, oh, it's an interesting deck you're playing. I was saying, you know, you too. Shout out to my opponent. He didn't have a name, but he was a uh, Pirate 40690. So shout out to you. Uh, he's going to start off. He's going to play his Perona. He's going to stack his deck. Just typical blue stuff. Our opener is insane. We see another Ivankov and we see two one drops. We see a stacker and a blocker. Perfect. Now, whatever Warlord we play off the top will be protected and we don't have to worry too much. But we also have that Ivankov, so we can combo to protect it anyway. So he plays his 3-drop Dofi. Again, he's not sequencing his turns properly. He's playing cards, then swinging. He's playing right into the trigger effects. But we're going to combo anyway. We're not going to take that early life. He did go first this game. He's going to be able to get his Ivankovs out first, meaning he's going to get his Luffy's out, meaning we're going to get hit with double strike at some point. So we want to keep that life buffer very high. Our turn, you know, we stack the Warlord, so we're just putting two on leader, swinging, use an effect play Jinbei he combos out we then decide to attach one to the one drop Dofi here if you don't know his effect is uh stack the top three but also you can attach a Dawn Nguyen swing and then discard a card bottom deck a one cost or less it might just be a one cost don't quote me on that but we just do that to get rid of the Perona just so we're not taking any more unnecessary damage he might try to go more aggro seeing that I'm aggro and recognizing he's going to get his Ivankov before mine. He plays Buggy, he searches Ivankov, he plays his Field Spell. We're kind of in a better position. He's going to be drawing a lot of cards, right? So I'm just kind of worried that we're definitely going to see the Ivankov Luffy at some point. He swings, he attaches to his blocker, swings. We let that die. That was a very strange play, if you know, by him. And then he attaches to his leader and swings at my Jinbei, and we block that because... We recognize that our Jinbei is going to go in next turn. Now we're debating how do we play out this turn. We're going to end up playing the Perona out of our hand and then going for a leader effect. We could have also played a Pacifista just to try to keep the board presence live. But we play Perona. We're looking at how to stack the deck here. We put the I should have probably put that Ivankov at the very bottom. But I did want to see both Ivankovs. So we stack our deck, we play the Jinbei off the top, we're going to swing into his blocker, we're recognizing that we're going to have a Bonkov luffy combo, so we don't want him to have any more blockers than we need to, and I wanted to swing at his blocker before I swing at his life, because I don't want to give him extra combo, if he doesn't have combo in his hand already. So here we go, a Bonkov luffy we kind of read that this was coming just by the way our opponent was playing, he decides to use the Luffy effect to bounce. This is fine. I mean, he's going to draw off his leader. He then uses his field spell to ditch another Luffy off the top of his deck. His late game's not there anymore. We just saw him pitch so many of his good cards that, like, he has two Luffys in the graveyard, one Luffy on his field. He's only got one Luffy in the deck. As soon as I deal with that Luffy, that's probably the last Luffy I'm going to have to deal with. We're just going to combo out of this swing here, make sure that our Ivankov is live and drawing as many cards as he can. Again, swinging before we play. It's good sequencing. Want to play around Sobbles and the Life as much as possible. Even if he doesn't play the card, I'm not trying to get sacked by cards out of life. It's just a real feels bad, man, and it can really just lose you the game flat out. I mean, those gum gum pistols out of life in the early game are insane. Same thing with the, um, the one black event. It uh, KOs of four or less. Insane. You don't want to play into those. So now we, you know, did our Bonkov stuff, drew our card, played our stacker, and we pass. Our opponent is in a 
awful position. He has one card in hand, so he can't use his Luffy. He's swinging at my life for nine. I think he recognized here that, like, he's in a losing position, right? Like, we are winning this game 100% now. Just looking at our board, there's nothing that he could have done to stop us. Even if he plays a Mihawk, we can just trade his whole board. Even if he plays a Mihawk and doesn't swing, we're just coming at him crazy. And he probably didn't even have the Mihawk, judging by his one top deck. You know, if that's a Mihawk, good on him. He uses his field spell, pitches, and then he stacks. I'm assuming this is just so that he can draw a combo for the next turn. But it, again, it's not going to matter. He's tapped out. I'm not worried about anything he draws. He's getting hit for double strike. We are killing him. So our turn. We are going to look at the cards in his hand. This thing is 7k. Even if he has two 2ks, we could just put two on Luffy and swing and he can't combo out of it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We put three on Luffy because we're bouncing a 1k to his hand. So if he did have two 2ks and that 1k, that's not enough to combo out of this. So he's taking double strike. So he takes the double strike. Now we're thinking, okay, we're probably not killing him this turn. I think I need to play the Ivankov out of my hand. Otherwise, it might just be GG's on the next turn. And looking back at this video, my opponent probably could have killed me. I mean, it depends really how he wanted to play his next turn. But there is a world where Luffy double strike into an Ivankov into a leader could have killed me. But it really just depends how much Dawn he wanted to commit. And also what I drew off the top and what I drew off my life. I think he would have lost judging by the cards that I got off my life. Because we would have been able to combo out of most things. But still. I mean... It, he should have probably went for that instead of what he does. So we swing seven. We play the Ivankov. It's typical stuff. You saw me play the Ivankov then swing. That was bad sequencing. I should have swung then played it. I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do. He swings Ivankov at my Ivankov. I just let it go. I just I saw that he couldn't kill me. I didn't want to pitch a card because I wanted to protect my life a little bit more. So we just let him do it. We also wanted to keep cards in our hand now because we are not a Vankov. We don't just draw two at the end. We still need cards in our hand and the cards in our hand are very good. So he plays Mihawk. He bottom decks our Luffy and then you watched what he did. You saw him play that one drop blocker right there. And you're going to see why I've been stressing swing first then play. So he swings that leader. We go, okay, that's five. We're comboing out of that. We know we're getting hit for a double strike here. He goes double strike on Luffy, swing seven. We're taking it. We can't combo out of that. Um, boom, boom. And would you look at that? So he swings. He bounces our one drop to the hand so we can't bottom deck his blocker on the next turn. But because he played his blocker before swinging at my life, my trigger effect absolutely destroys him. Trigger effect, boom, bounce the blocker. And that's just GG. That's just flat out GG. There's nothing he can do now. He's tapped out. Doesn't matter what he sees off the top of his thing. He's dead. 100% dead next turn. And this is why you need to swing first. Then play your cards. Especially when it's blockers. Especially when it's blockers. Playing your blockers should be the last thing that you do. Because there's really no reason to play them before playing anything else unless it is like a queen unless it is like you know these cards that have relevant effects on play so boom you know swing can't combo out we swing we swung four we know he has a dead card in his hand even if he combos out of that with two two k's and a one k he's losing to perona and my leader so this gg's cleaning it up right here um, shout out to my opponent and shout out to you guys for watching the video. Hopefully I didn't say, um, a million times like my deck profile. If you guys like the deck, please make sure to check out the deck profile. I'm going to try to put a link in the description below and you know, don't forget to like subscribe and until the next one, peace. Just like that, we're at the end of the video. Guys, if you're enjoying the videos, please do not be afraid to hit that like button and share with a friend. If you have any questions or suggestions, we would love to read them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.